Falcons EdTech Tutorials. On this episode, how to increase engagement online with Pear Deck. Hi everybody, if you're watching this video it's because you are interested in learning about Pear Deck and what Pear Deck is and what it can do for you. So I've been using Pear Deck as a tool to see if my students understand the material that's given through notes, so uh, through Google Slides or a PowerPoint presentation. And they access Pear Deck using their own device, be it a phone, a computer, or a tablet. So it can be used both in class and while kids are at school. Uh, they'll have their device so they can just log into it much like they would for a Kahoot game instead of now just having shapes uh, and colors on their device they actually have the slides you're presenting on their device and you can ask them questions that they can answer directly on their device so you can check for understanding as you go uh, a big bonus to this is if you already use uh, slides or powerpoints it is very easy for you to add these questions these pair deck uh, functionalities in the PowerPoints you already have created. So let's get started. Uh, the first thing you'll need is to have Pear Deck installed. It is a Google Chrome extension, so you'll need to go to the Chrome Web Store or just Google Pear Deck extension, and it will bring you to the Google Chrome uh, extension website. So then all you have to do is you click on Add to Chrome. I already have it installed, so I'm not going to do that. I also suggest uh, you look up in the extensions, Pear Deck Power Up, um, and you add that one as well. It's only so that if you do add animated images to your PowerPoint or your Google Slides, they will appear on Pear Deck as well. So once you've got that installed, you should see to the top right, the little pear icon. Uh, and then let's go ahead and add some Pear Deck material to some slides I already have created. So I just open up the slides. I use Google Slides because I prefer it to PowerPoint, but you can certainly use PowerPoint and I'll show you what it looks like after this. Um, so, you know, I've got my own slides here. There's stuff going on. Let's say I want to add a question to this slide in particular. I will click on my Pear Deck extension button that appears up top. And now I've got a choice. I can either start the lesson. This will open up the Pear Deck website and with a code, a join code for students to join, or I can add a question. So I can add a question directly to this slide, or I can add a new slide with uh, a question. So let's say I wanna add a multiple choice question to this slide. You click on multiple choice, and then you add the two choices. Uh, say my choices will be melange, We'll update the slide. And now when students get to this slide, they will have the choice between answering mélange or réaction chimique. Obviously, we would have to add a question. So you can add the question directly on the slide, which I will do now. Let's go. Let's see. Obviously, I want to make this bigger and more visible, so we'll do that. So that's one way you can add interactive questions to your slides using Pear Deck. Another way would be, oh, this one already has questions. Another way would be Uh, adding a slide, a completely new slide. Let's say 
we go back to the beginning, you click on our template library. Uh, then there's templates for the beginning of the lesson, at the middle or at the end. I find that the most useful ones I found are during lesson. And there's those there. There's also specific to subject areas for math, science, social studies or languages. Uh, one I've used a lot comes from languages and it's this one. You can, um, it'll, it'll, if you just click on the slide, it'll add it directly to your PowerPoint or your Google slide presentation. It's obviously taking a little bit of time now because I am recording, so why wouldn't it? Uh, yes, we can try again. Ah, okay, so it added the slide. Perfect. So now you can change this slide. You can add the words here. So I can add, for example, good I can erase this image find a picture on Google of molecule let's say this one here is nice and cute and we can just add it directly to our slide by clicking and dragging and now students will be able to just draw a line with their finger or a pencil from the word molecule to the actual image and you can have several images uh, so on and so forth there's another one i really enjoy it's in world languages again and it's the one where you have a bank of words that you have to put in uh, the correct sentence so here you've got it for, um, I believe this is Spanish, but you can change the sentences and have them fill in the blank for the specific uh, vocabulary word you're trying to teach. So that's one way of adding interactive questions. I'm going to delete these before I forget. And then next year I will reuse these slides. So that's, that's basically it in a nutshell. You can look at all the other templates they have, uh, or you can experiment with the different types of questions you can add. So you've got text question where they just answer by typing in their answer. There's a, a number question where they have a sliding bar and they have to pick the number with a sliding bar. Um, the, there's one they, where they could draw, essentially. Uh, and then it gives the different options depending on the different slides you use. I mostly stick with text and choice, uh, maybe number, but mostly text and choice are my favorite ones to quickly check student understanding while I'm delivering the lesson. Uh, now if we quickly look on how it looks like in PowerPoint, I've already got this open and to open Pear Deck, it is in the three little dots and more options, and Pear Deck will be there. And beyond that, it's the same, it's the same option, same functionality as on Google Slides. So now that we are, we've created our Pear Deck slides, we've updated our slides with Pear Deck. What you do to use it, you click on Start Lesson. And then you have the choice between student-paced activity or instructor-paced activity. Student-paced activity means that students can flip through the slides back and forth whenever they want. They don't even need to pay attention to you. I prefer starting with instructor-paced activity. This way you choose which slide the students have to focus on. And at the end of the lesson, I usually switch it back to student-paced so that if they want, they can go back and look at the slides or the notes some more. So we'll pick, yes, we'll start a new session. We'll pick student, it's asking you to log in, you log in.
and this is what's going to appear on your screen. So if you're in class, this will appear on the projector and students have to go on joinpd.com and put in this uh, code. If you're teaching from home, at this point you should be sharing your screen so they can see the code. Um, so I'm going to join right now with my cell phone just to give you an idea of what it's going to look like. And once you've got enough students connected, or when you think you've got everybody connected, all you have to do is click on continue and students can still join afterwards if they get disconnected, for example, much like the hoot, the code will appear up top and um, you'll be able to join. So you don't see it right now, but when students connect, they have a choice of typing in how they feel with the green smiley face, neutral yellow face, and uh, frowning red colored unsmiley face, or they can skip. I'm going to skip. So I'm connected as you can see down here. And what I see on my phone is the slide and I can answer the question because I haven't deleted question. It's fine. So we can continue and whenever I flip uh, slides, it will change the slides for students as well. So here there's another question. The question is combien do il y a -t-il? So I will answer on my phone. And as soon as students type, you can see at the bottom, it says how many responses you've had if everybody's answered yet or not. Uh, and you can look at the responses directly or you've got the dashboard. The dashboard will show you the answer per participant. So if they've done things right, they've joined with their own name and you'll see the name associated with um, their answer, which can be useful because I've had a student give an inappropriate answer and I was able to look at the dashboard without presenting it. So if you're in a class, you just uh, show the slide, put the projector on freeze, and then you can look at the answers at your leisure. So you avoid having any inappropriate answers pop up. Um, and eventually you can even show the whole group all the answers. You can go through it like that. So that is it essentially. Unfortunately, the dashboard, um, what I what you see right now, is only available for premium users. So after 45 days or a month, this option will go away. I think I have two days left before this goes away and then I'll have to pay for it. Um, but eventually, if it is something that the school board wants us to use or that maybe a lot of teachers want to use, the school board may or may not uh, pay for a license. So we'll see. For now, you can still use it uh, without the dashboard. You can just show responses as you go. Uh, and when you're done, all you have to do is you click on end and you end session without naming. You can also, what I like to do is turn on student paste. And now students can flip back and forth whichever slide they want. I do this at the end of the lesson to give the opportunity to students to look at uh, the slides if they've missed anything. So that is all for today. I think it's gone long enough. And if you've got any questions, don't be shy to email me and maybe we'll see each other on Friday for a quick questions and answers. Thank you.